a registration online uh, that will kind of fast track you through in the morning where you'll only need to kind of get your temperature taken and check in. Um, if you don't fill out in advance, you'll either have to fill it in on Sunday morning or if you know you're not going to be able to do it online ever, you can um, ask me to give you a few copies so you can fill out at home before you get here to make the process a bit faster. So if you'd like me to give you a few kind of copies of the form to take home with you, that's fine. The form is exactly the same every week, you just change the date, so the questions are always going to be the same. The date just changes, so I can give you a couple of forms to take back with you. If you'd like, if you've not filled out a form this morning, you need to fill one out, and you've got them at the front. We're going to have a kind of um, flow, one-way system on the morning, so you would come through the parking lot entryway, and like I said, this is over, you're going to exit through the back. Um, out through the front of the church, this final exit out of the church this morning. You'll also see that the pews are marked out exactly where you should sit. Um, so the sides of every pew, there should be a, a, a page behind you or next to you to indicate where to sit. If you're not sat where there is a sign, you need to sit where there is a sign because that is to make sure that you're all adequately socially distanced from each other. So you'll see my little welcome back sign. You should be sat by one of those and you know you're in the right place. Um, a few other announcements. You'll see I've got lots of nice colourful um, pages in here. Um, the Rome small group series is still going on. Um, and David still posts plenty of stuff virtually online as well. <coughs> and get some ministry during the week virtually as well. Um, the crop walk is today, so if you're able to walk today, or you are walking, Sina is um, heading that off. So I'll see if you have any questions about that, but the walk is happening today at the church um, to raise money. If you'd like to donate, even if you can't walk, and you've not registered, you don't know what to do, but you'd like to donate to the crop walk today, you can also um, catch Sina after the service. And um, you'll see information about our bereavement evenings that we have going on in November. There is two dates, and um, they are both virtual, so you don't need to go anywhere for them. If you um, are struggling with loss during the season, or you know someone who is that would benefit from these evenings, and um, pass this information on to them. They've got two to choose from, and it's all done by Zoom. So you can um, have a look there and how to um, do that. If you know someone who would benefit, but they have no idea how to use Zoom. You'll see on this form it says that um, we can offer sort of Zoom and training if you are not sure. So don't worry, we want to make sure it's accessible to everyone, even if you're not too familiar with that platform. Um, on the first page, you'll see a little bit of information about Soups of Salvation. Um, I know Joe wanted to say something real quick. I don't just want to speak super loud from the back so everyone can get up from the front so everyone can see. You can't use my microphone, unfortunately, so just speak really loud. Well. No mic for you, so stop right okay. there and speak. Okay, sure. Yeah. So, I'm Joe Turso. Um, I run the Soups of Salvation mission. Um, very loud. We've just been very busy this year, especially with COVID. We've made close to 1,500 meals for local charities. Um, we've been doing that in conjunction with the First Presbyterian Church in Fafford. They've been distributing sandwiches and we've been supplementing with soups because Elizabeth, our uh, First Presbyterian Church, Elizabeth Church in uh, Elizabeth had to close down the kitchen, obviously, and, the, and their dining room. So uh, last year I made an appeal for, uh, for turkeys and hams. If you have any extra in the holiday season, you would like to drop them off. I've been extremely appreciative um, here before service, or you can make arrangements by me by email, or on uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays from 3 to 5 o'clock, you can come Tuesdays and Wednesdays. In the office, too. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Joe. So, I'm going to do my caps off for something in the back of the people on the live stream. Um, Joe's asking for donations of turkeys and hams um, for the soup ministry. They provide so many bowls of soup for people who are hungry and in need, and turkeys and hams provide so much meat for the soups during the year. So um, if you could spare one of your turkeys and hams during the holiday season, Joe will be very happy to take them for um, that ministry. Um, and I can provide his email address if you'd like to get in contact with him. And for those in the congregation, his email address is in the bulletin. Has anyone else got any other announcements?
by his people and the sheep in his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations.
find out what Zacchaeus because he wasn't very liked because he was kind of a greedy man that took money into the law people. And after Jesus went to his home, he was like, you know what? I'm going to give half of my stuff away from the poor. I'm going to right my wrongs of what I've done. And Jesus forgave Zacchaeus and said, Today salvation has come to this house, for the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost, which is the verse I read at the beginning. Jesus knew Zacchaeus' name, and he knew everything Zacchaeus had ever done, and when Zacchaeus met Jesus, his life has changed. It doesn't matter if you are short at all, Jesus knows your name too. In fact, Jesus knows every little thing about you. And, you know, that's pretty cool, no matter what you've done in the past, present, future, Jesus still knows your name, knows about you, and would love to come and hang out with your house, so to speak, um, no matter who you are, which is a really cool thing to remember, it doesn't matter who you are, like, Jesus would still pick you to hang out with any day of the week. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we know that when we, met you, when we meet Jesus, it will be a life-changing experience. Thank you that Jesus knows our names and loves us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we've got the video now. Where's the video? So you guys can do it. Shout out to Sarah Zinderman. She uh, got these kids and their parents to figure out how to uh, record themselves uh, singing that wonderful children's song, and, and then she put it all together. So we give thanks for Sarah, uh, we give thanks for Lauren, we give thanks for Scott and Paige and Seth and Justin. Uh, can we please get a hand for the, the staff of this? I'm going to be reading from Paul's letter in the Romans chapter 3, uh, starting in the first verse. Let's hear what the Spirit is saying in the church. Then what advantage has the Jew? What is the value of circumcision? Much in every way. For in the first place the Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God. 
What if some were unfaithful? Will their faithlessness nullify the faithfulness of God? By no means. Although everyone is a liar, let God be proven true, as it is written, so that you, O Lord, may be justified in your words and prevail in your judgment. But if our unjustice, injustice, serves to confirm the justice of God, what then should we say? Let us pray together. Lord God of all light and truth, we ask that you would speak to our hearts and minds this day. Come upon us, and melt our hearts with your love, and enlighten our minds with your wisdom, and help us to walk out of these doors this day, and for those who are watching online, and walk out of their homes this day, transformed by your very Holy Spirit, wanting to love others more and more. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. I said on Wednesday uh, that we would be better served by uh, thinking about the faith of Jesus as much as uh, we think about faith about Jesus. American Christianity has mostly focused on the latter, thinking about what we have to believe about Jesus to the detriment of coming to understand what it was that Jesus believed about God, about others, about himself, and to the detriment of living as Jesus lived uh, according to what Jesus believed. Paul calls us uh, to this faithfulness of Christ Jesus, and he gives the example of Abraham and Abraham's faithfulness. Abraham believed that God would fully bless him, and that God would keep his promises to Abraham, that, that Abraham and Sarah would have some children, even though they were very old. Um, he believed that those children would be fully blessed, uh, and that they would be a blessing to all of the nations of the world. Now, Abraham also acted upon these promises of God. Now, would Abraham and Sarah have had children if they had not acted upon the promise that they would have children by, well, you know how they needed to act? Uh, and they did. Would they have been blessed in the promised land with tremendous prosperity? If they had not wandered through the wilderness, gotten all their stuff together, all their servants, their relatives, and moved to a new land, they had to act upon the promises of God, and so do we. Uh, Jesus also completely trusted in God's blessings over everyone. His foundational teaching was, repent and believe the good news that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this is how he lived. He lived knowing that love and mercy and peace and truth filled him and touched everyone around him, in and through him. He was the son of Abraham. He was constantly blessed by God, and he was a constant blessing to others, helping them to realize how blessed they were, no matter how righteous or unrighteous they were. He spoke to them and said, God sends the sun and the rain upon the righteous and the unrighteous, helping them to know that each and every day they were children of God blessed with love and mercy and truth. Uh, I was visiting somebody whose life has been uh, bended as of late, and I was thinking to myself, he's really going through a hard time, and I was thinking, where are the blessings here, O oh Lord? And we all know people who are going through a really hard time right now. But you know what? It was the same around Jesus each and every day. Jesus was no Pollyanna. He understood the sufferings of his people, but he also understood that God was going to get them through this suffering and this hardship and into the light and the life of God's kingdom. He had to believe it about himself at the end of his life as well. When he was faced with the cross, what would be the result of that? The end of his days? No. He trusted that God would get him through the cross and would raise him from the dead to be shown as the Messiah, 
the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace. And Jesus wants us all to know that in the midst of this terrible time that we're all going through, that God is going to get us through it. And not only is God going to get us through it, God is going to bless us in the middle of it. There's blessing in hardship and pain and suffering. We are formed by the cross of Jesus. We are formed in the character of Christ Jesus in and through joining and participating in his sufferings. And the best way for you to realize this is by reading about Jesus. I have 35 to 40, 5 to 7 minute, minute videos about the life of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark. Take 5 to 7 minutes every day and start working your way through the life of Jesus. Remember the hardships of the people around you. And remember how Jesus blessed in each and every one of them. Place yourself in their position. Think about what you're going through. Place the loved ones that you know who are going through a hard time in those positions. And, and remember what Jesus said to them. And remember what Jesus did for them. And then as you remember that, the blessings of the Spirit of Christ Jesus will rise up within you and descend down upon you. Um, I can't believe that Warren talked about Zacchaeus today. I threw in Zacchaeus at the last minute into this sermon. So the Spirit of God is good. His providence is amazing. Um, it didn't even make sense that I was including it because it's not in the Gospel of Mark, which is what my Bible studies have been on. It's in the Gospel according to Luke. But I decided that I was going to do a lesson on Zacchaeus, not knowing anything about what the Lord had planned uh, for a children's message today. And I say right here that you in the weeks ahead will have a chance to remember Zacchaeus up in the tree. Little reviled Zacchaeus, the tax collector. And Jesus seeing him, noticing him, and calling him down from the tree in order to say, Zacchaeus, I want to break bread with you, because you too are a son of Abraham. Uh, in the weeks ahead, you can remember the lepers who were rejected, who were isolated, and how Jesus went to them and touched them and restored them, because they too were children of God. Uh, you, you will remember women battered by this world. And then all of a sudden there was Jesus smiling at them, welcoming them, praising them, telling them that they were filled with wisdom and that he was going to send them out to proclaim the best of news to the world. You will remember uh, God and the angels saying to people, who were afraid. My goodness, are people afraid these days? So people need to hear what God had to say and the angels had to say. Do not be afraid, for God is with you. I've been reading a really important book uh, for our fearful times. It's called The Coddling of the American Mind. And it's tracking some very dangerous trends in our country, trends that are rooted in misinformation and mistrust and fear. It used to be that uh, we Americans um, would allow our hearts and minds to be stretched, uh, to come to know what is good and what is right and what is true for everyone. And now instead we're simply trusting in ourselves and we're trusting in our own little truth bubbles trusting in our own little bubbles of comfort. But those bubbles are eventually going to be burst by the big bubble of God. They're going to be, going to be burst by reality. That's what happens. The authors uh, quoted Chief Justice John Roberts, who spoke uh, at a graduation ceremony a year or two ago, and uh, listened to what Chief Justice Roberts had to say to the graduates. From time to time in the years to come, I hope you will be treated unfairly so that you will come to know the value of justice. I hope that you will suffer betrayal because that will teach you the importance of loyalty. Sorry to say it, but I hope that you will be lonely from time to time so that you don't take friends for granted. I wish
promise you bad luck from time to time, so that you will understand that the failures of others are not completely deserved, and that your success is not completely deserved either. I hope you'll be ignored so that you know the importance of listening to others. And I hope that you will have just enough pain to learn compassion. Whether I wish these things were not, they're going to happen. And whether you benefit from them or not will depend on your ability to see the message in your misfortunes. In other words, there are, there's always something bigger happening around the, the, the things that negatively impact us. And, and that bigger thing is the bubble of God. Paul said that human injustice and human faithlessness, which we all experience, that these amazingly confirm the justice and the faithfulness of God. You can think of a child and how a child learns that his parents love him and will care for him no matter what. When does he really learn that? When he goes astray and his parents continue to love and to care for that child. The same thing goes with our God. So when injustice and infidelity are bearing down upon us, we can and we should learn that justice and fidelity are the greater and deeper realities than the injustice and infidelity that others are showing us. Let's take the crosses that we are forced to bear and remember the righteous power and the purpose of God that is overarching those crosses and underlying those crosses. Let your pain and your loneliness teach you compassion for and solidarity with the less fortunate around you. And then act upon that understanding that comes to you. Reach out to the lowly and the less fortunate. Reach out to your friends, your elderly parents and relatives who need to know that they are loved and cared for. They are lonely. So let your loneliness charge you to reach out and care for others. Uh, let your cross grow the character of Christ Jesus in you. When you hear about tragedy, lament, grieve, weep as Jesus wept at the loss of Lazarus, and then remember that Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead and rise up into hope. Now you can get angry when people wrong you. Natural, normal, sometimes right and righteous to get angry when people wrong you. Jesus got angry. But remember that when Jesus was wrong over and over and over again, he also bore with those who wronged him and continued to love them and forgave them 70 times, 7 times. And even though we do not have Jesus' power, His mercy, His love, His self-control, whenever these things, this injustice, these wrongs are bearing down upon us, we can remember His power, His love, His mercy, His self-control, and whatever is availing us, we can bear with it through His strength, through His righteousness, through His mercy. We can remember Him and we can receive grace upon grace upon grace to endure whatever this world wants to throw at us. I'm going to have some more charges at the end of the service, uh, but for now, from the one who alone is worthy of all honor, power, and glory, um, to God be uh, all of those things in and through Christ Jesus and the church and God's people say.
that everybody in the world, in everything in the universe, that they all belong to God. And so, uh, our job in life uh, is to return to the Lord gladly the things that are already the Lord's. In doing that, offering our lives and the works of our labor as a sacrifice of thanksgiving, we find, we find the fulfillment and the joy that God wants for us. Let's do so now as we sing, How Great Thou Art. Thank you. 
do take some time to just out to you. A hurting world. And we ask God that you be with those first of that in salvation and in the health. We pray for those who are hungry. Ask you, oh Lord, that in these scary and difficult times for so many are more and more becoming food insecure, that you would bless the food banks, and that you would bless our leaders and make sure that they want to care for those who want to be, especially children. We worry, Lord, about children who may not have health insurance, and pray, Lord, that they will be cared for and get the help that they need. We pray for our loved ones. Pray for people suffering from natural disasters. We want people to remember how great you are, O Lord, and that you are there for them and that you will bring them into your life. We are meant to be signs of that greatness, that sustenance, that health and love and care. And so work in us, Lord, and help us to be more and more like your son. And we take a moment now to, to lift up to you in the silence of our own hearts or with our voices raised, our own loved ones or places around the world in need of your care. Mark. Lewis. Tom. Denise and Lynn.
Thank you. 